Hello, this tutorial is about using various approaches to setting a musical theme. A short example composition for orchestra is based on the three motif theme. In each phrase the motif undergoes modification and you'll also see the harmonization of the melody with variable tension, extended chords, thus obtaining a tension level curve. In this video tutorial we'll process a musical theme consisting of three motifs. You'll see techniques that affect the melody, such as imitation, rhythmic diminution and augmentation, and Hockett technique. From the Schillinger system we adopt harmonization of the melody with variable tension chords and thirds. These techniques are incorporated in a short orchestral composition. If you like these kind of tutorials, please subscribe to the channel. You may give financial support through a single PayPal donation or become a regular patron. Let's start with an overview of the full example composition used throughout this tutorial and that you will hear in full at the end. The main element is a three motif theme shown here in diagram and staff notation. The motif's characteristics are leaps versus steps and the implied diatonic mode. M1 is an ascending leap followed by a step and you will see how this is harmonized in various modal scales on root G. The second motif, with the two leaps connecting A flat, E flat and B flat, suggests a minor mode and has either Neapolitan or lowered sixth degree character. The final motif is a wide ascending leap with a dominant chord property. Notice the chromatically descending highest note pattern. A set of techniques will affect the melody. You'll see imitation, rhythmic diminution and augmentation and Hockett technique. Also we'll harmonize this melody using a technique from the Schillinger system of musical composition. In this two volume set of books you'll find many approaches to writing harmony. I did a series of tutorials on diatonic harmony and how to control the tension level in chord progressions. Here we'll harmonize the melody with a technique from book 6. We'll use chords in thirds. When we assign the melody notes to specific chordal functions, this leads to basic triads and extended chords. We'll implement chord tension level control patterns with rising dissonance and relaxation. Progressions are also affected by the root movement through using positive and negative root cycles in the diatonic and symmetric harmony system. Listen to the harmonization. Setting the melody notes as a specific chordal function in extended chords yields a non-functional, floating harmony with many non-diatonic chord connections, as you can see from the root cycles expressed in semitone steps. Frequently at the end of a phrase I apply a specific root movement and create a closing cadence, confirming a diatonic key. The thematic elements return in the example composition. A slow piece of approximately 2 minutes duration. It is for studio orchestra and we may identify a number of phrases built from the three motifs M1 to M3. The orchestration features solo versus tutti phrases that focus on one or more specific techniques applied to the source elements. We'll look at each subsection in detail before playing the full piece. The opening measures are an intro for harp and the first statement of M1 for solo violin. The harmony alternates between the pure G major triad S5 and the F major 7 chord. Already this chord pair has floating quality and applies a mixolydian mode with the lowered 7th degree, the pitch F natural. The melody is played by solo violin and in the annotated score I've indicated the virtual instruments used in this project. Measures 7 to 10 present M2 and M1 in succession and you'll hear the effect of the harmonization, imitation and hocket. 
Motif M2 is harmonized with extended chords, multiple S9 structures and an F minor 11 chord. This progression seems to move away from the G major mood, moving ambiguously towards F minor and major. M2 is played by piano. The melodic technique is imitation in solo violin and glockenspiel. The next M1 statement is presented as a hockey technique for woodwinds. I recently uploaded a video dedicated to this subject. Listen to the audio rendering of the M2 phrase. The next phrase includes another statement of motif M2, followed by the wide ascending leap in M3. Listen once more to the harmonization. This harmony uses extended 11th and 13th chords, before returning to a basic triad on root D, suggesting a closing cadence on the dominant degree, here with suspensions in the sustained clarinet chords. To solo violins comment on the piano lead. We reach the first tutti climax phrase in measure 14. It's based on motif M1 in both rhythmic augmentation and diminution. Here's the piano reduction. The harmony uses extended 9th and 13th chord structures, closing with a strong diatonic R5 root movement from F to B flat. This is set for brass section. Notice how the lead French horn plays a varied form of M1, corresponding to a rhythmic augmentation. We find the diminution form as a sextuplet imitation for woodwinds and xylophone. Listen to the imitation as played by two pianos, bent wide to right and left. And here is the combination of harmony and melody, with the chords in the third piano, panned center stage. Let's proceed with the orchestrated version. Listen to the rendering of the M1 diminution as woodwind imitation with orchestral virtual instruments. This phrase has the original motif M1 in parallel octaves for upper strings, doubled with the pair of solo violins. You'll hear the tutti later, but the piece proceeds with a more tranquil subsection starting from measure 16. It is built around motif M3 and set as a hocket. Listen to a rendering by stereo panned pianos. The local harmony is a static extended G dominant 13 sharp 11 chord. And here's the same fragment for orchestra. The hocket is distributed over solo woodwinds and two brass instruments, a stopped French horn and a muted trumpet, also playing flutter tongue. The full motif is set for melodic percussion, vibraphone and glockenspiel.
The next phrase presents M2, M3 and M1 in succession with imitation, reharmonization and Hockett technique approach. The harmony again is with variable tension but here with majority of extended ninth chords. There is opening contrary motion between outer parts. The pair of top staves shows the melody with the lead in the lower and imitation in the upper staff. The harmonic tension level increases in measure 20 and ends on an incomplete altered chord. Here also you see contrary motion. The original lead is coupled with a hocket variant in the top staff. Listen to the combination of melody and harmony. In the orchestral version the piano has the lead melody. You'll find imitation and hocket in woodwinds and pitched percussion. It is a very lightly orchestrated setting. The mood is impressionistic. In the audio rendering I've omitted the strings. Near the end there's the second tutti climax in measure 22. The main element is motif M1 presented in original form and as rhythmic augmentation. The latter is an ascending arpeggio. The orchestration has lead French horn and oboe playing the original transposed form of the motif M1. The diminution starts in cellos and low woodwinds rising in parallel octaves to the upper register at the end. The brass harmony is based on constant tension, extended major 13 chords with sharp 11 and a strong diatonic R5 root cycle from B flat to E flat. Again there's contrary opening motion that helps to create the climax effect. And here is the closing phrase, continuing with motif M1 followed by a cadence. The harmony tension level decreases as we move from a ninth chord to a basic triad G major as closing chord. This is approached with a modal dominant to tonic root movement. The motif is presented in augmented form, see the top staff. In parallel there is the combination of hocket and imitation. Listen to the three piano rendering. In the orchestral version the solo violin plays the augmentation form as string harmonics doubled with the glockenspiel. You'll find the hocket in vibraphone and harp. There is imitation arpeggio backing by clarinets. The closing cadence is for string section with a final diminution statement of M1 in flute and first violins. After discussing the phrases in detail, now you'll hear the full 2 minute composition. It's a Cubase project with virtual orchestral instruments. The MIDI was transferred to Dorico for creating a full and reduced score. The piano reduction fragments were bounced to audio in Logic Pro. The full score is available as PDF file on my website. Listen and read along with the reduced score.
You've reached the end of this tutorial on how to use various techniques to set a source theme or motif. We modified melody characteristics through imitation, rhythmic augmentation or diminution and the Hockett technique. The Schillinger system approach to harmonization of a melody with variable tension chords yields non-functional floating chords with somewhat impressionistic flavor. This approach has great potential for implementing a specific mood. The progressions are intertwined with functional harmony cadences. All this was integrated in the orchestral example composition. The combined effect of various theme modifying techniques and delicate orchestration creates strong contrast in this short piece. As always, there's a companion document with text diagrams and score fragments on the Patreon account. If you find these tutorials useful, please subscribe to the channel. Support my educational video production efforts through a single PayPal donation or as a regular patron. You'll find the links in the description below. Visit the website for more content or purchasing ebooks on musical analysis, arranging for orchestra, and shilling a rhythm. Thanks for watching.